she looks like a fucking doll. Popped up. President, do you still want to make the Sandinistas cry, Uncle? I want to cry free elections. Do you think they're likely to do that? Are they going to give up what they've got because you want democracy in Central hey, America? Hey, Bill, we're on a different subject, but uh, you know what our purpose is there, and I'll be talking about it in this speech. So but that's Senator Anoye well, says, says that you knew yeah. about the money, sir. Senator Anoye says you knew about the money to raise funds for the country's military aid. Is that right, or not? Yeah, you know, no, you know, no, you know, no, 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 Yes, I was aware that there were people doing that, but there was no, nothing in the nature of a solicitation by the administration, to my knowledge, of anyone to do that. When you say you were aware, sir, so were you sir, aware that they were giving aid? money for military aid? All I knew was that there were people that were raising money to be of help to the Congress, just as people have done that for other causes in other countries. But even for military aid, sir? I had no detailed information. I did know, and the people that I met with, I met with to thank because they had raised money to put commercials on television 
urging the Congress to support the Congress. Well, Senator Inouye seemed to suggest today that maybe you knew more than that. No, as the program went on, I listened to him very carefully. He made it plain what he was actually saying. That, uh, that no, I did not have knowledge of things of that kind. What he had said in the first place was that I was uh, not off someplace on an island, uh, not paying any attention. Gentlemen, the President of the United States. around the world. I am honored to present one of the most respected people of our generation, the Reverend Billy Graham. President Reagan, Mr. Chapman, distinguished guest broke up in the New York Times. But I am going to pray for you. Shall we pray? Our thought of this afternoon to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Constitutional Convention, we thank you for our Constitution, which is your pro freedom of the press. We remember with deep gratitude and racial justice for all our citizens. Our Father, as we remember your faithfulness and mercy to us in the past, so we pray for your future, for we are dependent on you. We need to carry out their tremendous responsibilities. We pray the same for the publishers here today that wield such an influence on our lives. We also pray for our world, moral vision, and may we be zealous in building our future on its foundation. We pray that during the larger measure, the opportunities and responsibilities that are ours as a nation. We remember also your word which says, the house they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waiteth but in vain. So we pray that this will become a year of moral and spiritual rededication for us all. We celebrate today that it could bring us the very moving and momentous message that we anticipate. We are honored that that man accepted our invitation, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. very much. Thank you, Dr. Graham, for being here. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. There she is. I was just looking for the other woman in my life. <laughs> it's a great us lady who for a hundred years now has stood watch over this gateway to freedom. It couldn't be more appropriate that a year later we gather here on Ellis Island to celebrate with all of you, the ladies and gentlemen of the fourth state, who also have stood watch over our freedoms and who have been the guardians of our liberty. It is, if those of us in government and the press sometimes think of ourselves as antagonists, it's only in the context of transitory events, the rush of daily business that can obscure for us a deeper truth, that we are two complementary institutions. Once again, the freedoms 
Americans enjoy. But my job today is more difficult. It's not about those who came to this land, but it's about the dream that brought them here. Today, another people are in search of that dream. I speak of the people of Central America. And let me begin in 1981. Keep down. I wonder how many remember that when we first drew addition, they didn't want the chance for democracy that we offered. In fact, their sympathies lay with the communist guerrillas, we were told. But then one day, the silent, suffering people of El Salvador were offered a chance to choose for themselves a national election. And despite the bullets, the bombs, and the death threats of the communists, the people of El Salvador turned out in record numbers, standing in line for hours, waiting to vote, to vote for democracy. Congressional observance free speech and free press offers the only real hope for the long-term peace and security of the region. They know such a system provides a check and balance on any government, discourages the money to pledge to their own people that our objective in Nicaragua is clear, free elections. On the other hand, the Soviets and the Sandinistas have also been wounded. Make no mistake. The Soviets are challenging the United States to a test of wills over the future of this hemisphere. The future they offer is one of ever-growing communist expansion and control. This is a choice before Congress and the people, a basing that these Marxist Leninists never intended to honor those promises. We've seen them use negotiations time and again simply to delay, to manipulate world opinion. And that's why the choice World War II Without the pressure of the Central American democracies and the freedom fighters, the Soviets would soon solidify their base in Nicaragua and the subversion in El Salvador would reignite. The Democratic Party, the party of Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman, and John Kennedy, have stood in firm support of democracy and our national security. The survival of democracy in our hemisphere requires a U.S. policy consistent with that bipartisan tradition. So today, I want to describe the framework of that policy. A policy that begins with support for the stable, long-lasting democracy in Costa Rica and the democracies taking root in El Salvador, Guatemala, and diplomatic efforts to achieve a lasting peace. Earlier this year, President Arias of Costa Rica put forward a proposal aimed at achieving a peaceful settlement of the conflict in Nicaragua. At the center of it, this administration has always supported reasonable diplomatic initiatives aimed at peace and democracy, whether it be through contadors, through face-to-face -face meetings, and the removal of Soviet and Cuban military personnel from Nicaragua. And quote. While I do not endorse everything in that letter, I certainly join these comments in calling for the restoration of freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, freedom of speech and free elections, all of which are now denied by the government of Nicaragua. Our Senate passed by a 97 to 1 vote. Thank you, Mr. President.